Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can make a height adjustable rear spring setup for your F2X or F3X BMW 2, 3, or 4 series. So what I've done here is I've taken a couple different you know, off the shelf products um, and combined them so that I can control the rear ride height of my BMW. Um, another added advantage of this is I get to choose my own spring rates. Uh, so I can get the ride that I'm looking for. So what I've done is I first started with a lower spring pad. This is a uh, polyurethane lower spring pad from Energy Suspension. And uh, one of the nice things about it is it's very slick. And this will fit right over the uh, mounting point in the uh, rear lower control arm or camber arm. And then you can go ahead and take any coilover spring you want so for example I chose hyperco springs and uh, you know you just place that on top uh, one of the things I noticed when I did this was just how easily the spring slides around almost as if it were on a, uh, a thrust bearing um, so this spring that I've chosen is uh, 900 pounds per inch um, quite a bit more than stock but uh, it goes with the custom tuned dampers that I'm uh, using um, and then when we work our way up from there uh, Here's where like most of the magic is, uh, the rear height adjuster. So one of the things is, is the F2X and F3X rear upper spring cup uh, is the same as the one used in the previous E90. So if you've got a set of like old E90 coilovers with the height adjustable rear, you can reuse those. Um, the other way to do is uh, do what I did and go to BC Racing. They actually sell their rear height adjustable uh, spring mounts and uh, you can get two of them shipped for $100, which is pretty darn good in my opinion. So these guys right here, uh, when you buy them, it comes with the upper spring pad that's made out of rubber to keep this firmly seated against your chassis so that when you spin the collars, the whole assembly doesn't spin. And it also comes with this lower spring perch uh, that's plastic that can sit on here. And what this does is this allows it to rotate very freely, almost again, like a, uh, like a thrust bearing. Um, the inner diameter of this guy is 62 millimeters because uh, I guess BC Racing uses a slightly non-standard uh, inner diameter spring spec. But if you want to use a standard 60 millimeter coilover, um, you can just run without it. And uh, the perch itself will uh, accept a 60 millimeter spring. Um, so what I've actually done is uh, I've actually chosen a, a 2.5 inch inner diameter spring, which comes out to 63 and a half millimeters. So super close and you can see that still fits right there and stays securely there. Uh, now these BC Racing adjusters, they have 40 millimeters of adjustment, so quite a large range um, for you to go do that. Um, the spring itself, I've chosen a 10 inch spring that just will give me uh, about the right ride height that I'm looking for, but if you wanted to go lower, you could choose an eight inch coilover spring or nine inch coilover spring. Uh, one of the things I also did is I purchased some uh, Swift thrust sheets and the purpose of that is exactly the same as the function of this guy here, is it's just to allow the spring to rotate as it's compressing and unwinding, uh, so it's not binding. So these really aren't necessary, but hey, I bought them anyways, uh, so I'm going to use them. Uh, these ones were for a 65 millimeter uh, inner diameter spring, and uh, they will just go right on here, just like that. So the uh, plastic one goes first, and then the metal one, and then we will go ahead and put it right on top of here. So that guys is the uh, DIY height adjustable rear spring setup uh, and then next we'll get into uh, installing it on the car. Alright so I've got my car up in the air right now um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start by taking off the wheel. So I'll take my 17 millimeter uh, and get these uh, lug bolts off. Now for this last one, the wheel likes to tip over a little bit, so I just like supporting the bottom with a foot, and that, that will just keep the wheel from falling off when I loosen it. Okay, now I'll just grab it down at the bottom at the top and pull the wheel straight off. Next, I'm going to take an E12 socket, and I'm going to undo the three uh, bolts at the top mount. This will allow the shock to drop low enough when we lower the camber arm. Next we have to take off this underbody shielding um, underneath the lower control arm or camber arm and 
in each of these four holes, two on this rear side and there's two more uh, at the front, there's a 10 millimeter uh, nut that you have to take off. Next, we need to remove this bolt, which secures the lower camber arm to this ball joint on the knuckle. Um, on some cars, like the uh, pre-LCIs, this is a 21 millimeter bolt, both front and the nut itself is also 21. Uh, on some cars, like my LCI 2017 model, I have an E20 socket uh, or E20 bolt in the rear and also a 21 millimeter nut in front. Um, later when we place a jack, you'll notice how this extends down below the arm. So I usually like to place my jack directly under the spring, otherwise it can be difficult uh, because this will be pushing against the jack rather than the arm going up and aligning with the bolt holes. So now you can see I've got my jack supporting the arm and I've actually lifted it up a little bit so that this bolt can just slide right out. Next we'll lower the jack and the uh, lower arm will slide out of the knuckle. Now we can go ahead and grab the lower arm and pull down on it like that so the spring assembly can be pulled out. Okay, so as you can see, the lower spring pad, as it stands, doesn't sit all the way quite flush down. I can still push down a little bit. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to trim a little bit off of this right edge here. Okay, so this is how I've ended up uh, cutting it. I cut a little bit off of uh, both sides, um, and now I'm just gonna place it in. There we go. Seat's nice at the bottom. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and place the spring in, and uh, you'll notice that this has a flat bottom, um, but it's a little bit higher up here, so I'm gonna place this side facing inwards into the car, since the arm is uh, angled slightly. Okay, now that the uh, spring is in, we have to jack up the camber arm. But one thing I wanted to show you is uh, notice the uh, angle I have the jack at, and then notice the angle coming out of the car that that lower camber arm is. Um, you do kind of want to align those uh, so that when the camber arm comes up, it will seat into the ball joint uh, at the bottom of the knuckle uh, more easily. That is probably the single most difficult thing about swapping the rear springs is just getting that ball joint and the uh, holes on the camera arm aligned so you can slide that uh, 21 millimeter or E20 bolt back in. All right, we're back under the car now and I am just raising that camber arm to try and get the ball joint in it. Sometimes you may have to take uh, the uh, knuckle itself, rotor unit, and just push down and see if you can get it to align with that. So I'm going to need to go up a little bit more. Oh, and you can see there I've gone too far. If you're having difficulty aligning the uh, hole with the ball joint, um, you can do what I do is I grab a screwdriver and I can get it in there and then I articulate it into the position I want. Once that's aligned, we can go ahead and kind of start getting our bolt threaded in there. If you can't get in all the way, that's okay. Uh, you can get it started and then uh, through, screw or thread it in. This one is actually not being too bad for me right now. I was able to get it in almost both sides. Lastly, we'll torque this one down. This uh, particular bolt is 165 newton meters or 122 foot pounds. Don't forget to fasten your top mount. And then these get torqued to 28 newton meters or 20.65 foot pounds. Just like other coilovers at this point, if you need to adjust your ride height, you can take your coilover wrench and uh, get it along the locking collars and spin them to get your desired ride height. Don't forget to put your bottom cover back on and secure it with the 10 millimeter bolt. Lastly, we'll put our wheel back on, get the lug nuts in there, and torque them down to 140 newton meters or 103.25 foot pounds.